Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I wanted to show you a few really cool things I've been working with recently, and uh, something that you could just pick up relatively cheaply. So, the first is these Raspberry Pi Picos, and they come if you buy them in bulk in this the reel. So you can buy them on a massive reel and pay like a, you know a thousand pounds and get five hundred of them or something. But they're literally three to four pounds. They, they cost next to nothing. And they have everything you need right away to get going on it. So you have on board uh, basically the Raspberry Pi. It's not Raspberry Pi, sorry. It's a Raspberry Pico. I can't remember the name of the chip. I think it's a 2040. I think that's a 2040 chip. You can look it up if you care that much. And uh, you just basically on board have a USB to serial uh, adapter, which absolutely must be tiny. In fact, I'm not even sure where it is among this. I mean, you can see here there's a little bit of uh, a clock for the chip here, and that could be a little bit of flash or something, but everything you need, again, on that castellated little PCB works really nice on breadboard. You can get a specialist breadboard that actually has the pinouts, so all of these labels actually on the breadboard itself it makes it super handy. Um, it comes with a uh, operating system of sorts already on it running um, MicroPython and you use Thony. If you download Thony for Windows you can uh, set that up right away. Literally just write code and programs on it and download software straight onto it. So that's absolutely brilliant. So I have enjoyed this but I have to admit I am working on a bit more of an involved project at the moment with it and I am removing that MicroPython. Um, it is fun to use and it has its pros and cons, but I am going to Arduino on this because I do have a relatively simple embedded system uh, controller to, to actually implement using these. And I just, I'm more familiar with the Arduino and I know exactly what I need to do in C. So I'm shifting to that. I'm not saying you can't do it in Python, but it's sometimes it's horses for courses. And, and if you find yourself really having to stretch the language to, around what you're trying to do, maybe it's not quite the right language for it. But that's pretty good all in all. Now, this is a really fun thing. Look at these. These are kind of expensive as well. They're, well, say expensive. I mean, they're this tiny, but they uh, are a few quid each. And uh, look at this, it's a tiny little thing. I'm gonna have to zoom in and it's something that Arizona Microchip make. <laughs> and again, you can see like, that's my calloused hand and how tiny this thing is. It's smaller than your fingernail. So I'll have to show it to you in, a, in something else that's been uh, assembled. So I've made, uh, using just some standard off the shelf bits, this little gadget here. And uh, you can see there's a little USB serial port yeah you don't actually i didn't actually have to use this uh, right away I, I i put this on later because i was just messing around with it but actually all i did was i took that module which is a bluetooth module and you can see i've mounted it had to mount it upside down to get the pinouts i need and i've just free formed a circuit onto this battery with a couple of leds and uh, i can just operate it like that so just to show you how it works i'm going to turn it on and when I switch it on, the little red light there flashed briefly. And then I hit connect and, uh, oh, it couldn't connect to it. I have to find the device, the list, so there we go. And I'm connected to it, hurrah! <laughs> and that's basically it. Um, it allows you to connect to it and issue serial commands from a, a suitable serial interface. So I, I do have this thing on my phone, but you won't be able to see much apart from once I push these buttons which send commands the thing flashes that's why I do have it on this line here just to, sh to prove to myself really that it's that easy that the messages from the phone get transmitted uh, so via the serial terminal and then down the RXTX straight to this device here into the PC so I could read it but this of course could be uh, anything you could actually mount this on that and you've got a nice little combo of putting that little chip on here and being able to operate your Raspberry Pi Pico over Bluetooth from your phone device. Now it does have a really nice little interpreter on it of its own. So the LED flashing and things like that that you saw you saw happening um, were actually from its built-in scripting language. And of course they do have SDKs if you want to roll your own. 
but on board that little guy there of course is a whole I think like dual core type chip with its own operating system so very cute very nice if you want to add Bluetooth to something and I say Bluetooth I'm talking data Bluetooth not um, audio Bluetooth because that's a, a different proposition altogether but this is definitely going to um, be the way to go about it and hopefully in a, a future project not too distant future we will do that but to say the one thing um, with this as opposed to this of course it's not really a convenient footprint for your uh, breadboard however there are boards around I have seen where you can adapt them so it's, it's imagine a breadboard footprint and you can just solder that on it's got standard footprints for various types of um, surface mount component to adapt them to the breadboard so cute stuff and you say well why do you need all of that what are you going to do with that kind of thing well there are loads of things You've seen this thing that we picked up a while back, which I've yet to use, um, but I thought I briefly might uh, cover it because we, I don't know if I talked to you about it. But this has a standard ESP12 module on it, which is so ubiquitous. Um, but cutely enough, it also has an RF learning stage on this, which does allow you to learn from those remote controls. So great for a garage door opener, gate opener, that kind of thing. But what's super cute is that there is an open source IoT project that uh, gives you the whole sort of smartphone app and that kind of thing, but in, a, in an open source way and lets you program these chips with that. So you can have a, an, your own infrastructure running these. You don't have to use those third party Chinese ones. And talking about third party Chinese ones, I'm just gonna load one up on my phone. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of these uh, apps on your phone where you're gonna have um, for control, controlling smart life, smart thing, they're all basically the same. But this one, I believe, is a Show Me one. And Show Me do have their own um, interface. So I'm just going to open this up. And you can see I do have a robot vacuum cleaner called RoboSuck, which I think is a pretty, pretty apt name, sitting there. Uh, and I saw this literally for £6 on eBay. I thought, I have to have it. And it's a temperature and humidity sensor because I'm always interested because sometimes I feel uh, hot and cold when I shouldn't be and I'm determined to figure out why and my theory is it's all down to humidity and this thing looked really amazing again say six pounds it literally fits in the palm of your hand comes with a, a little adhesive pad which is cute if you can stick it somewhere on the wall and of course look whip that out and it's going to have its own battery in there so and look I whipped it out a bit too hard there so let's see though how easy it is to pair it so we've got that on the screen there so I'm going to say add should we try scan first? Let's try. Oh, oh, when it says scan, does it mean a barcode? I mean, okay, let's see if it can scan the barcode on the back here. I think it's looking for a uh, QR code. Oh, it says it says actually look for the QR code in the manual. Mm. Oh, there is a QR code in the manual. Here we go. Hold it still. <laughs> it says. I'm not sure why it's not picking it up. It's just like ignoring the QR code. Oh, there we go. It has found it now. So now it says searching for near to, nearby Bluetooth devices. And of course, this will have in it um, a, a similar device to the one we looked at earlier. In fact, I'm a bit curious to see which one it is. We might just pop the lid on it once we've paired it. And you can see here it's saying 27.1 degrees C. So it's not too bad. It's nice. For me, it's nice. Anyway, I'm not hot. That's about right for me. But 61% humidity, that could be a little bit tasty for some. Now, uh, it didn't quite find it. So while it's messing around, I'm sure it will find it eventually. Let's see if we can have a look inside. Oh. And <laughs> look at that. You've got your nice little battery in there. A little bit of uh, a rubber pad to keep it in there. A couple of torque screws. Right, you couldn't find it. Let's put that aside. I'm not interested in that anymore now. I'm interested in looking inside it. So we need to find two little star screws. Some micro torques, which that's the perfect size. Now I don't really want to break it though, because I do, I do want to use it. But it is amazing how much tech they're packing into something so tiny. I mean, once it's Bluetooth to do the initial um, setup, but I think it switches to Wi-Fi beyond that because it's the only way your app's going to look to it. Okay, again, so trying not to break stuff, but not trying particularly hard. Oh, ooh. 
Okay, so everything is going to be under that screen. And I don't want to put a fingerprint on the screen, so I'm going to be a bit careful. Now, let me put the screen back. Good work. Good work, everybody. I think. It doesn't quite want to go back the way it came out. Now, look, everything is on that. You can see there is an antenna. That's a lovely uh, dark PCB as well, isn't it? Very nice. Not much to see here. You've got one test point. There's your screen. CHML Mini. Maybe it is only Bluetooth. Is that a Bluetooth antenna? Is it doing dual time? Ground reset. And there, that is the temperature sensor right there. <laughs> Look at that little thing. That is phenomenal. Now, let me see if I can get it... Uh, to register but just looking actually I can see they the chips themselves do have markings Whew, let me uh, let me have a look now IST 3055 MA0 it looks like and a TLSR8251 hmm so yeah, I think you're, you're gonna get a combination of basically a, a processor and um, well thinking about it you probably could have had the Bluetooth and the temperature everything all in one I'm not sure why there is two chips on that that's one of those anomalies well I'm not having much success pairing it right now so I'm gonna leave that aside it seems that although um, this is in the app listing it might be a Chinese device and then you'll have to change the region sorry for that gurgling in the background by the way there's some sort of drain issue with the washing machine so I'm just gonna go and try though that serial Bluetooth app we used before to see if it can actually just at least spot this in a scan. So I'm going to go to devices and I'm going to hit scan. And we have this new device at the top, this ET150. I don't know if that was there. Anyway, let's just try that. <laughs> Connection failed. No serial profile found. Use a long click on device to define a custom profile. Let's see what that does. devices so it does try to connect to it it seems ah I should have gone to edit hang on devices hold that down hit edit let's see oh I see so you have these profiles predefined custom and then you have these UUIDs I'm sure though with the right equipment you probably could start interrogating this thing so there you go um, I'm not gonna bother right now though I'm just gonna stick it somewhere I can see it um, but yeah something to explore in the near future so yeah these things are great if you want to go ahead and buy yourself some raspberry pi picos do and uh talk to me about them i'll help you out with them and oh no have i lost all my things i was gonna say <laughs> oh i've got a bunch of them i've maybe i've just got more i'm trying to remember what these things were called uh again um i'm not sure exactly just you'll have to google them on farnell or something the arizona microchip bluetooth module but it looks like this it's the one that sits on your fingernail they definitely look usable as well if you're in the market for that kind of thing thanks for watching